Hey everybody, update on this whole Patreon situation. Um, like I expected, Patreon realized that this was a big screw up and they rolled it back and they're not going to be doing it at all. Um, they mentioned that basically they finally understood everything. Payment system disproportionately affected the $1, $2 donations. Aggregation is highly valued and we underestimated that. I don't know how they underestimated that. Um, and then fundamentally, creators should own the business decisions with their fans, which is another thing I agree with. With They should have either asked creators in general if we supported this or made this like an option, you know, instead of trying to force this on everybody. I think Patron learned a lot today. And, um, I mean, as far as corporate turnarounds go, a week isn't terrible. Um, the a Patron is a bit bigger than I wish they were. Um... So I guess they they were a bit slower than you know you'd expect from a little tiny startup. They do have investors, unfortunately, which is usually a bad sign, honestly, if you want a company not to suck. But um, I do think this was just generally them being kind of idiots. They looked at their data. They realized, oh, people, you know, they don't care about the fees too much. So they, you know, because they want to give money to the, the peoples. And then they combined that with, oh... We want this charge up front thing, but that might mean more fees. So obviously people won't care about more fees. So let's just drastically increase the amount of fees for no real reason. Um, and I don't think this was evil because if you look at the way Patreon makes their money, um, they would have been making the same amount of money, except if all of the $1 pledges left, um, they actually make less money because Patreon's cut is 5% of the pledged amount. So either way, Patreon was making the same amount of money, except they'd make less money as long as people pay less, which obviously with more fees, even if people didn't care too much about this fee change, uh, more fees would always mean less money, even if it was like just 1% less instead of like a lot less, which is what it ended up being. So I'm pretty sure they just, they got all about the data and they did not really look very closely at the data and didn't really understand it in real world terms. Um, so I posted an article on my website here. Uh, it's just on the front of sirtapdab.com. Um, I think what they could have done... Oh, I'm not in the article. Uh, I think what they could have done is a change here. Um, they already kind of make it clear, in my opinion, that yes, you get charged today, and then you get charged on January 1st. What they could do is like a little warning. It's like, oh, your next charge is in less than seven days. Oh, dang. And then they could give you an option to delay pledge until the next billing cycle. I don't know how they don't have this already. This is like basic stuff because the problem, the big problem with charge up front is that currently, say I have a patron and I require you to spend a thousand dollars to get to my, you know, my paid posts where you see like, I don't know, considering the top patrons, it would probably be furry porn because that, that is what makes money on patron. I'm not, I mean, I don't know. That's just what happens. But anyway, Say I have some amazing high quality furry porn that everybody wants to spend $1,000 a month to see. What you could do if I didn't have charge up front, you could say, yeah, I'll pay a thousand bucks. And then you don't actually pay a thousand bucks until January 1st, but you still have access to my extremely high quality thousand dollar furry porn because that's just how Patreon handles things. Um, physical rewards, obviously you could just not ship it until you get your money. But if you make paid posts, which is how I distribute almost all of my rewards, I just post them and be like, hey, if you've paid money, you get to see the thing. I'm not going to worry about it too much. Um, and in my case, you know, it's not really, you know, I don't have $1,000 furry porn on my patron. I'm sorry. Um, so I'm not really too worried about people, you know, stealing my rewards. It's mostly a bunch of Parker pictures and um, early videos people are going to see anyway, just later. Um, but patron basically lets people access things before they paid them, which is dumb. And charge up front fixes that. And in my opinion, the current implementation of charge up front is fine. They could just make a little clear that, oh, you might be... The whole fear was the double charge situation, which nobody's ever complained about in my on my patron. Um, and I kind of like that. It, it kind of lets you give a one-time donation, which you can't otherwise do with patron because you can just uh, pay immediately with charge up front, then cancel. And that's basically a one-time donation. They still get your money. And so you can give a one-time donation that way. Um, otherwise, people tend to use PayPal for that, so that's why I offer PayPal. Um, but yeah, so that's why I added this delay pledge until next billing cycle. And then basically just mark that account as unpaid, and then you just can't access the paid posts. 
I don't know why. That's not how they always did it. Like, I can't really even believe how bad this is. But yeah, I have this whole article up here. I'm not going to read it to you. Uh, if you want to read that article on how these UI changes could have improved things a lot with no fee structure, no major business changes on patrons end at all. Uh, I really think this should be what they do or what they could have done. Uh, and it could avoid this situation with all these extra fees. I still can't believe they put these two charts out there. It's like, yeah, this bottom one with all these fees, that's the one we want to do. That's how we want to do it. I just don't know, man. Um, but yeah, patron doesn't suck. They're just kind of stupid. Uh, it happens. Like I said, Silicon Valley, I'm pretty sure there's just something in the water. Especially if you're a tech startup. There's just something in the water. That or the investors slip them drugs. That's also a possibility. I don't know. But every company, every tech company, once it goes to Silicon Valley, it gets a little stupid. Not sure why. Um, but yeah, it's safe to donate back to, to creators that you pledge to on Patreon. Um, I have not gotten all of my pledges back. I do not expect to get all of them back, unfortunately. That's kind of the problem with the fallout of things like this. And it's extra unfortunate because it affects creators, like I said last time. It affects creators 95% and it affects Patreon 5%. So it's, um, well, more like 80% because like there is the, the, the fees issue. So, I mean, but yeah, we still get affected uh, over 10 times as much as Patreon by people pulling their money. Which is why I'd really appreciate if Patreon would like tell us and like ask instead of being like, yeah, we're going to do this thing in two weeks and everybody's going to hate it. Have fun. It's your problem now. <laughs> Please don't do that again, Patreon. Like I said last video, I love what Patreon tries to do. I love the idea of the business. I, it's a business that I wish I had done instead. And then I, I promise if, if you give me Patreon, like, like Jack, Mr. CEO man, if you give me Patreon, I promise I will not do idiot things. You seem to have a problem doing idiot things. I don't know, man. Just, you know, maybe pay me to be your not-idiot officer. I'm I'm very good at this. I've spent entire days of my life not being an idiot. Isn't that right, Parker? That's right. <laughs> anyway, I, I, I think this was just a screw-up. Obviously a very big one. But I think it was a genuine screw-up and not an evil cash grab. And if it was an evil cash grab, it's kind of reassuring. Because that means Patron is extremely stupid and not able to do an evil cash grab properly. So... If they ever try to do an evil cash grab, they will just get less money and die. <laughs> so, it's kind of a relief in that way, I guess. But yeah, feel free to subscribe to your patrons, your, your creators again. I hate how it's called Patreon, but we're not patrons. We're creators. It's, it's confusing. And I never know where to call people my patrons or my Patreons or just subscribers. I don't know. I guess patrons is the preferred terminology. But yeah, things suck less. So that's that's nice. It's 2017. We don't usually get to see things suck less. So um, yeah. Um, and completely unrelated news, but not big enough to make a new video of. So uh, my PS4 broke over a month ago, and I sent it into PlayStation Support, and they sent it back. Uh, real quick turnaround. Um, but FedEx refused to deliver it to my house, basically, because I work like a real people job with real people hours. Uh, 9 to 5, and they just kept trying to deliver during my job and never asked me when to deliver. Never let me sign for it early. Never let me, like, say, just leave it by the garage. Uh, they didn't even let me pick it up at the distribution center. I was not aware that was a thing that they could do. I thought you would always, always have the option to go to the distribution center and pick it up. Um, they, they might have lied to me because they lied um, multiple times over the course of this transaction. So, so first they called the wrong house. And said it was going to be delivered there. Um, they called my parents' house, which that has not been on record with FedEx for 10 years. Um, I've, I'm not sure I've ever had a FedEx package delivered to them since um, before college. That's a really, <laughs> that is incredibly out of date. And it's not on my records either. I checked my records on FedEx. Uh, my parents' address and phone number are not listed. Um, they think that maybe they looked it up. Uh, in the phone book because I'm not in the phone book because I'm a millennial and I don't have a landline phone. So they just found the first people with my last name and just called them and like, yeah, it's probably them. Even though the, the na my name was not in, in the number. I don't know. Um, but then they told me they checked at 7 o'clock and they would have woken me up or at least I would have been awake and not at work. 
So they lied about that. So it's possible they lied about me not being able to pick it up at the distribution center. Because like I said, I'm pretty sure that's not a thing that they do. But um, after over a month of Sony or FedEx not knowing what to do, I'm not sure what happened, but they just kind of dicked around for a month with my $400 console. And it's finally being delivered. And the sad thing is, I changed the address to go to my work. Because FedEx apparently can't deliver to my house. Um, and it turns out what they did without telling me is they upgraded it to 24-7 delivery. So I could have had it sent to my house and it would have been delivered today. But they never told me that. So instead it's going to my workplace, which is closed today. So I can't get it until next week. And I'm actually taking next week off. So I'm going to have to drive to work during my vacation to go get the PlayStation 4 that FedEx was supposed to deliver over a month ago. But honestly, I'm genuinely surprised I might actually be getting my PS4 back. I figured FedEx had basically stolen at this point. So I'm, I'm getting my PS4 back, so that's cool. Uh, don't never send me anything by FedEx. I hate FedEx. I've never had, I've had more trouble with this package than all other packages in the last several years combined. I, I, I genuinely have no idea what happened. They screwed up more than Patreon as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> But that's more of a personal thing. Anyway, things suck slightly less as of today. So that's nice. And I don't always get to share that with you, <laughs> that things suck less. So I thought I would share. Share the love. Isn't that right, Parker? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Mer, you've been a noisy boy today. Anyway, things suck less. Goodbye.